Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 73. In this episode, we talk about Siri being cracked, ray guns, and three elements that finally get their name. And if you like the show, click like. Thank you for listening. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode uh, 73. Uh, welcome. Uh, with us in the show tonight, we have Quinton. How's it going? From Mike Gaming. Good, good. Thanks. We, we had your other two colleagues last week. Yeah, I, I saw the show. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, then, of course, the usual Jan from Yellen. I am the usual Jan from Yellen. As opposed to the unusual Jan from Yellen. <laughs> no, he's pretty unusual. Okay. He has to work with me for like 12 hours a day. So, <laughs> And then Johannes. Hello, hello, hello. And myself, Tim Hawk. And the mixer. Uh, we're going to go directly into the show tonight. Uh, but we Don't apparently we always? have a random. We do have a random. And uh, the random is the origins of the phrase, cut the mustard. So, do you, do you all know what the phrase means? No. I've never no. heard to cut the mustard. Life. I've heard other to cut, it's, but not the mustard. Yeah. No, this is not cutting the cheese. This is cutting the mustard. And, um, and it's, it's making the... Grade. And making the grade, and it's usually okay. used in the in the negative sense. Though they didn't cut the mustard, it, it's very infrequently. I've never actually heard it used as a "you cut the mustard." It's always in the in the negative. And apparently, the origins of the phrase date back to the early 1900s. Oh, my uh, my apologies. There there was a book written uh, then, but the the phrase itself might actually date back to at least 1672 when the term as keen as mustard was first recorded. Up to mustard or just mustard means up to standard in the same way as up to snuff. Um, so that's one of the origins. The, the other, the other um, one, like where the whole phrase appeared, sorry, not the early 1900s, but the late 1800s, 1894, a, an author, O. Henry, in Cabbages and Kings, called Mustard the Main Attraction. And uh, and used the uh, and used the phrase in his work there. So uh, and then later, O. Henry in a story of in 1902 wrote. So I looked around and found a proposition, a woman that exactly cut the mustard. Okay. And what this has to do with 73 or the show? Nothing. nothing. It's totally random. That Absolutely. Was, that was pretty random. Thank you. You got to give him that. I sure. sure. cool. random. <laughs> uh, so I don't will you know. proceed and cut the mustard, please? <laughs> <laughs> we'll attempt to. We'll see if we cut the mustard. But we'll see at the end uh, of the show. Any dates or anything we need to be aware of? No? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Star dates or zero zero. Just go look there. Everything no, there. no, no. Even more. <laughs> exactly four weeks from today, one month, we have our first December public holiday. Woohoo. 16 December. When was the last time we had a public holiday? Too long ago. So there's a date <laughs> to look forward to. Cool. Definitely. The rest of the year can just go and sit in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, okay. Our first topic is something <coughs> someone put in our show notes last week and we didn't make it. So we promised quite diligently we're going to get it here. And the fact is three more elements have been named correctly or officially named. Yeah, um, it's, uh, it's quite a lengthy process uh, from the sounds of it. Um, and, and complicated, I get it. You know, you get apparently a lot of disagreement with what, what it should be called. Yeah. Uh, quickly, just give them it's... Darm Stadium. Yep, uh, Darmstadt, but spelt with a DT oh, at the end. Darmstadt. It's yeah, very German. It's yeah. very German. Yeah. <laughs> Rundgenium. Yeah, I don't know if that's spelt, but I would say Rundgenium. Rundgenium, because English people can't say a diphthong. And Copernicum. Yeah. Copernicium. Copernicium. What does it mean if they've been named? Yeah, that's come from. It, this right. means that they actually they, had working names before because these elements are well known. The elements 110, 111, and 112. Are they in the periodic table? On the periodic table, periodic of, the table of elements. Periodic table of elements. That table. Yes. Are they on there? But they're, uno the, they, they're unofficial isotopes of the thing. That, I mean, these three now have only it, just been officially yeah, because named. Because they've been discovered now. Yeah. They've, been, they've been made. Physically been made. Yeah. It, it, some exists. Yes. Like they've been made to exist. <laughs> exist. They've <laughs> okay, been proven so, to exist. There so did go. they get added to the table or they no, always they've been all, there? they've been there, but they weren't, they didn't have proper names. Uh, if you check. <laughs> they used to be called. Scholars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, sorry. Who comes up what with this What happens stuff? with this is, is this is a couple elements that, that they say theoretically we should be able to create. Mm -hmm. Okay. But until they've actually been physically created, you can't give them a name. Okay. So yeah, how were they on the periodic 
<laughs> table. Because if you follow the, the because all the, the uh, elements in the periodic table follow that X amount of neutrons, and there's a there's a pattern to it. Okay. Yep. So they theorize that you sh- theoretically these elements could be could made. exist. Yes. Yes. Uh, and should exist because I mean, if you just combine yeah. the right number of protons. Hey, presto. But the, some of them degrade too quickly. So yes. they degrade so quickly by adding and that, it. And that's what happened in these cases. These, these things, they have a half-life of like milliseconds or like two seconds. The, so so but, they have a short half-life. Yes. Yeah. So on the, <laughs> on, the, uh, on the screen now, I don't know if the, if the mixer is going to move it up onto the main screen, is how these elements are usually named. And um, because <laughs> it, the, the element 111 is uh, three ones. It was just named Nelson. Un, 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 unium. Nelson, Nelson would have been great, wouldn't it? Actually, I, I checked it up on Wikipedia. It's not un, 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 unium. It's pronounced un, un, unium. <laughs> yeah, because uh, it's a uno. one. Yeah, un, un. It's, it's just yes. completely r- ridiculous. And it's got three use. And I mean, if Listen, you, I just want to ask. I made a comment t- three seconds ago that said scholars, and you went, uh, how does un, 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 un come in? <laughs> un, 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 un come in, in general language. Because it's Greek. Except if you're a scholar. Yeah. Uh, Latin. Or Latin. Latin. Yeah, comes from Latin. Nelson. <laughs> as far as I know. Well, that, if it were a British physicist. I did warn you, if we see any more numbers tonight, I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> now you've got... So, so yeah. ignore the numbers. Number. Move along. <laughs> Move along. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so just out of interest sake, previously, older elements also had uh, wonky names. Nitrogen was formerly known as azote. Uh, in 1900, Friedrich Ernst Dorn named his element 86 emanation. And the name was suggested to repla- the n- name that was suggested to replace it was Niton, also an N, <laughs> same as nitrogen. And it took 23 years before the name was changed to radon. Chlorine used to be called muriaticum. Okay. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Yeah, moving <coughs> swiftly along <laughs> from that to something totally different. Um, what is mustard? Wait, what, what is mustard? Uh, it's omnomnomium. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, just move along. <laughs> okay, anyway. um, not quite exactly tech, uh, but the New York Police Department was dismantling uh, Occupy Wall Street this week. Well, it's geek. It doesn't have to be tech. Well, yes. Um, but part of the thing was that they're trying to do like a bit of a media ban by denying all helicopters in the area and putting barricades so no one could actually film them doing this. What they seem to forget is everybody now has cell phones. And it's not like the mo- I mean, what, and what they also seem to forget is that Occupy Wall Street was big before the media caught wind of it. In fact, that was one of their big gripes, okay, besides the fact that obviously they wanted media coverage. But the media only picked up on Occupy Wall Street a week, maybe a week and a half into it. Like, it was almost like the media was ignoring it. And, uh, and to a degree, I understand that because you want, to, you want to say, like in South Africa, you know, they also started Occupy This and Occupy That. And Occupy Cape Town wasn't that bad, apparently. Like, they had a, a decent turnout. But Occupy JSE had, like, four people, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but there were very little people at Occupy yeah, JSE. Yeah. So maybe they would... Are you exaggerating s- four people? <laughs> <laughs> so, it was two. Yeah. So, so the media might have just been watching to see if, if this Occupy thing goes anywhere. Mm. Um, in, all, in all fairness, though, I mean... You have one hippie staging a stand-in. The media's not going to cover it, but you get a hundred hippies staging a stand-in. Then, then it's suddenly uh, newsworthy. Yeah, you know, and all of a sudden, yeah, exactly. You're yeah. standing outside the monument in Washington, yeah, pretty and much playing crazy music, and it's awesome. So, um, yeah. So now, um, you know, and somehow the police forgot that they managed to get the media's attention. You know, on their own. Mm. Anyway, that it's not like you know the media made Occupy Wall Street. So. They managed to get all the people there and occupied without the media. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Which is um, great. Yeah, no, it's very cool. Well, it shows you modern uh, social network, which you can actually do. Um, and the power of Anonymous. Well, <laughs> well that, that's a different story altogether. <laughs> that, that's like you've got your, your hacktivism going on on the internet and stuff like that. Uh, I think uh, Occupy Wall Street's a lot more grounded than that. Well, and except I mean, that their, their demands are a little... Techie. Yeah, but their demands yeah. are a little airy-fairy, though. Yes. Um, well, uh, well that, that's why I used the, the term hippies earlier, because, I mean, it is very reminiscent of, of the, the 60s. And well, the, the, the hippies at least had, like, get out of Vietnam, bro. I mean, that was fairly straightforward. <laughs> and I think it was a Now the war, the war has moved a lot closer to home, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the war with... with uh, Give me money. I deserve well, I, I, free I, money. I do laugh a bit about it. It's part of his anti-globalization. <laughs> wow. Right? Okay. In what sense? Is that? So it's part of the thing is, you know, all the jobs have been globalized okay, and okay. outshored and all the rest of it. And to protest it, they're using Twitter 
yeah. and Facebook uh, and do starting a global movement. Yeah, but it's not just it's not just jobs though. I mean, like they're, they're complaining about the fact that the majority of the wealth of the country. Yes. And now this is interesting because now we can move into yeah. the, the very next link. Um, and so I don't know if this has been pasted into IRC, but um, the Guardian did an interesting info did an interesting info video infographic video. And we were trying to think mm. up a name for this thing earlier um, about what what does it mean? Sorry, Johan, uh, more numbers for you. But, uh, what one percent? You know, what is the one percent to the ninety nine percent? And in in actual numbers, yeah. what does this mean? And the Guardian showed that a third of U.S. wealth is locked up in the in the top one percent of people of, of people in the states. And the, they actually argue that of that, there's actually a smaller fraction that also like mm -hmm. controls the majority of the wealth and it's actually gone better and better with them as the recessions hit and and they explain it um quite you know quite clearly um they say that the majority of the poor had their wealth locked into property when yes. the recession hit property prices plummeted which means their wealth plummeted the wealthy had their you know had their money not locked into just property but into business and stocks and bonds and so on and so forth and the minority of their wealth was in property in actual fact so um, and so th they just they showed that actually you know you might actually take that one percent and go point zero one percent of people are actually better off than ninety nine point nine nine percent significantly so. Um, and, and that was a very interesting little inf infographic video on, on The Guardian about what, what does this whole 1% versus the 99% mean and, and is there any truth to the claims? And, you know, it's not like 90% of the wealth is with 1% of the, the people, but a significant proportion of the wealth is locked in a, a very, very tiny minority percentage. of I, the population. I know, you know, it's not quite tech, but there's a lot of books which show that this, you know, the, the more, the, the greater the wealth disparity is, um, it's actually not wealth in a, car in a country that uh, dictates happiness in the country. It's, it's wealth, that, 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 that it's more or less a gradient. As soon as you have very high disparity, apparently that is actually quite an indicator of a how unhappy a country actually That is very be. interesting because now, now in my time in Sweden, you'll find that, that the, the parity between jobs uh, you know, like an engineer would not earn significantly more or less than, uh, you know, than, than a less skilled worker, yeah. for example. So that disparity wasn't there. I don't know what it's like now, but it definitely wasn't there then. And uh, I guess people seemed content. Mm. Can we now get you the tech stuff, please? Yes. <laughs> please. <All right. laughs> You've had your say now on politics. <laughs> Siri protocol crap. That was cool. Read that on ours. Very, very cool. They've, they've reverse engineered it. To the point they can now actually okay. create an Android app that works with Siri. For just for somebody that doesn't care what Apple really does, what's Siri? <laughs> Siri is... Is that their voice recognition system? Yes. It, but it's, it's not theirs. It's, 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 they it's, bought it. It's, uh, Siri is as much Apple's my, my, as Left 4 Dead is Valve's. So yes. what Google Voice does? No. No, no, not, it's, not at all. It's what Google Voice does, but more integrated into the platform. So it talks, it physically talks and interfaces to your apps and does natural language processing. This is something that, that so the guys at the Morocco... Google does. No, not quite. So for the, the whole idea behind Siri is that you can go, Siri, remind me to go buy groceries at 12, and then Siri sets a reminder you in your put phone. put the calendar entry in for you. Except you don't have to tell it Siri, you uh, push a button. Yeah, you can also do things like, Siri, remind me when I'm leaving home. I want you to read my. So then it draws a little geofence off. around your house, and when you leave that geofence. Okay, all right, so it's just taking voice recognition into some intelligence. Yes. Yeah. And they feed from that, they also feed into uh, Wolfram Alpha, <coughs> so you can ask it uh, what is the kind of blue it will return, you know, a picture of blue with the hash codes, all the rest of it. It's actually quite very good. It's, it's natural language processing. So, yes, Google for understanding language has always been there, but it's never really been plugged into a lot of things that are, are, are we will actually help you do things. Okay. All right. Okay, I'll give you so that. they actually have taken a step further. So Almost. hacking is, the hack that they're talking about is actually to get into the back-end engine. Yes. Well, they would, they just, calling it hacking is a little, well, it's a hack. Just, yeah, it's cool. Engineer. It's hacking in the sense that it's programming and, <laughs> and and stuff and geeky, but um, it's not like a, like they're trying to, to do something illicit, I think. Um, they're just trying to understand the protocol. And if somebody wants to reverse engineer Steam's chat protocol, by the way, I'll pay them money. <laughs> <laughs> well, part of this is also that, that Apple said, no, no, sorry, we, we can't run this on an iPhone 4. It can only run on the iPhone 4. So, you know, it's all about you, 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 the hardware is not strong enough. So the guys also reverse engineer and show this, this can run on anything. And when I say anything, they say you can even write an app 
for Android sending the language through to Siri that will actually work. Uh, but now I, I read, because uh, I actually went and read up about the, the article, actually. And one of the comments on the Slashdot article says that... You never that's, do that, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> what research, headlines? Research just throw it out there. Um, yeah, but now that this one dude was going on about a unique ID that's attached to every iPhone 4S. Mm. So you, while you'd be able to use it for your own personal use... Um, you wouldn't be able to write it and sell it into an Android app store because that ID is attached to the, the, the iPhone 4. So you, you would need an iPhone 4S anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, else I, Apple could just blacklist the ID and you wouldn't be able to use it. So, No, look, I, I don't imagine that somebody would actually write an Android app and in any way legitimately well. get around this. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, it does show you the whole fact that where they've been going on about that this will not work with... So basically, uh, we, we know two things, that it is cracked yes. and Apple are being assholes. Can I say that on air? <laughs> yes, of course you can. <laughs> okay. There goes our PG-13 so, rating. Sorry, but I mean, but I mean that, that's what Apple's always been like. They've always been so highly proprietary. Well, for for example, um, there was, there was uh, an example of that... Um, what tablet are you using? Of that guy... I know. It's what, horrible, what, what tablet are you using? Okay, there? I've got an iPad, but it's... Ah, oh, no, just check. <laughs> just check. Can, I, can I, I give you my Android tablet? Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Let's try this. Who here has an Apple iPad? <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Look, I, I'm not saying. So can I'm I be the one that commented to say I don't like the Apple products, the and really mean products. it? I think that the, Look, the yeah. people who have it are the ones who can pass fairest comment on. Yeah, that's what I'd say as well. because look. I, I, used to, I used to work on Mac a lot. Mm. Um, yes. job used to, it just used to be Mac the whole time. Um, and we always used to complain about it because as soon as something breaks, you know, you've got to fork out all this cash to, to get a fix. And it's so unnecessary at the same time. But Apple make good products. Um, I mean, I used to be used to do no. design work. No. I used to do they design work. They make shiny products. No, they, they, they products. I like shiny the things. They make <laughs> shiny products. No, That's all. No, the products and hardware, sorry. Yeah, I'm a strongly is good. It's good quality. Uh, personally, I think it's too expensive yeah. for what you're getting. Oh, for sure. It's shiny. But have you ever taken it apart inside of them? Anyway. Yeah, easy. and, and what, avoid that warranty. Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> Rather not risk that one. Cool. Anyway, on to our, our uh, slightly less now, how, after all of what you just said, how are you going to get excited about the next topic and actually mean it? Come well, say it. Actually, say it. And say the it. ice cream sandwich sauce has been released. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's the first sauce in a long time that's been released. Since Honeycomb. Because they skipped three. Yes. But they've made sure that no? you need... Well, I mean, no, 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 they, they skipped Honeycomb. They yeah, yeah, they skipped Honeycomb. Uh, ex excluding Honeycomb. Yeah, okay. sorry. But, but... but why they excluded Honeycomb um, and that's something that they admitted oh no that wasn't my butt my well, butt well, was my butt my butt that my butt is <laughs> apparently it was very badly coded it was what, very badly coded what do you need to actually compile anything on this damn thing what do you need you spoke about it on our special edition episode yes. that you can get on YouTube yes. just look for the ice cream sandwich <laughs> special edition just a little plug I in mean, well, nobody's going to be able to compile this damn thing you need like your crazy super oh, crazy yes. yeah, like Crazy, such old hat. But you need you need a massive, massive PC to run this thing. It, so why so so much? Um, I, I think it's just to get it to compile in a decent amount of time. So I'm speaking completely off the cuff here, but I believe you need something like 12 gigs, gigs of RAM. Solid state disk is recommended. Solid state disk, disk is recommended, <sighs> but it, the solid state disk, I think, if you've got low amounts of memory, if you've got a nice huge amount of RAM in this beast, then it can load a lot of the stuff into memory and compile. Um, so uh, I know that there's, uh, you know, but yeah, there's you recommendations mean just like a that. High end, P high end PC. Oh my word! Do you have solid state discs in your machine at home? <laughs> okay, yeah, you stream a, a podcast. <laughs> you don't count. <laughs> and for video edits, that's what you need. Yeah, I guess. But like the average Joe, let, let's put it this way: the average Joe is not compiling Android. But the average Joe won't be. But that, that's what I'm talking Android. about. You know, the guys are going to be compiling this, which are going to be signage and I'm waiting for the update. It's going to happen at some point. You saw that tweet today? Which tweet? Um, I think Harrod retweeted today. Signage is saying they will have um, ice cream sandwich art for all 20 supported devices in the next two months. Hmm. Woo -hoo. Sorry. See, I'm excited. <laughs> two months. <laughs> <laughs> which is cool because I run the nightly beaters and I'm quite ready for it. Uh, anyway, cool. But, but what did you do there now? Oh, it was just we, okay. it's, an, it's an Apple thing. It's an Apple thing. Yeah, uh, it's an Apple Mac, fanboy iPad, thing. Uh, okay, now just checking. We, we've got our own little greeting. <laughs> in, into something uh, slightly different. Uh, <laughs> China is building huge, gigantic structures. Yeah, tell me about that. The I the saw the headline and it looked very interesting. Uh, but well, we can't work out quite what they're doing. It's you know, all of them are sort of almost visible from space. Uh, just, just say that again. China's doing what? There's these huge 
structures that they're building out in the desert? What um, desert? Uh, it's a Chinese desert. Do, um, it's do, they, have, do they have yeah, a desert? They, they do. How big China is? They, they've got plenty. They've got plenty there, I'm sure. I'm asking. Yeah, geometry. Yes. Geometry. Not, not, not geography. S- you see. <laughs> um, geography. <laughs> like, like and you figured out earlier in science, <laughs> but, well, chemical science, not my strong point. What's interesting about it is, is that the picture that, that, that we're seeing, it's, it's actually quite relatively small. Uh, you can scale in a lot, a lot closer. Y- y- and you s- I don't think that's metal. Um, the, I know it's saying that it's a metal structure of some, some sort. That's what a lot of people are saying. But it all but looks flat. There's no shadows. When you go, no, you can see there's mounds, there's, there's grooves, there's everything. I, I don't see it being metal. Um, what it is, what alternative I can provide, I really can't. Th- this one I'm not so sure. The, the next one... Oh, that makes it looks sense. more structured. Yeah. Um, and they did say this looks similar to another, almost <laughs> like a array for analyzing aurora that has been built in Canada and stuff like that. So they say this is very similar. So it could be like that. These could be big signs. And the last one to me looks like a huge antenna. A huge antenna. Maybe they're like going to build this all over the world and make one okay, big Well, that's not antenna. the next one. No, I actually <laughs> Well, I'm wondering, is this, okay, this is total, total speculation. It's the answer to the SKA. Hmm. Well, because those those things might be just very. Were they one of the bidders? <laughs> no, but I think they m- were part of it. Uh, no, because they actually were going off to go do their own thing. There we go. Well, that or someone with a huge gigantic paintbrush had a little bit too much to drink and <laughs> decided to g- got very lost. <laughs> Some general on the power yeah. trip said, "Do you know what?" It's, it's my uh, son's <laughs> birthday. I'm going to do something amazing. So well, don't last, too. That's you what know the is. last astronaut um, man in space flight? Yeah. The guys were just leaving some graffiti on the camera lenses. <laughs> <laughs> Rather, take this, that, humans. No, 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 that would have to be pretty amazing because as you take it from different angles, it would have to move. <laughs> and also, they, they'd be seeing these things all over the world then. <laughs> there's one in Africa. Oh, there's one in you. Oh, that's oh, everywhere. That's also, oh, hold on. Give us a week. <laughs> yeah. The world is a small planet. <laughs> as, as Google starts updating the photos, they're going to be appearing oh, everywhere. People got bored of crop circles and they were just like, okay, we're over the crop circle thing. That is so 70s, 80s. Ooh, what is this? Now <laughs> no, they're starting China mass scale. See those crop circles in America? Yeah. We can do better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> anyway, we don't know what they are. Go check them out. Very, very cool. Cool. Next one, because we're talking about space, it's very relevant to go into it. Um, like Google Plus recently launched company pages. Yes. We have covered that in a previous show, I believe. And there is one <clears throat> page, one company page that everybody should follow. And I'm not about to say my broadband. Can you believe that? Um, <laughs> let's talk but you should, <laughs> but, but you should follow my broadband. Um, except that we do nothing on that page right now. But hopefully once they have multiple admins, <laughs> we can do something. We can do something. But um, NASA has a Google Plus page up. And it ah. is great. It is really, really cool. Um, it, it's really slickly done. And they post really interesting stuff there. So... Um, so one of the things that they've, that they've put on there is a uh, flyby, which we'll get to. In, uh, I've, I've suggested it for our kicker, I think. Okay. So, um, so one of the things they posted on there is like a time lapse of Earth. Um, and that's just one of the many cool things that they've posted on, on the Google Plus page. Very, very cool. Anyway, one nice quick thing. Next topic. Very cool. Take that, Facebook. Talking about that, <laughs> Let's Talk Network also has a Google page. But more importantly, we're trying to put together a Google South African directory of I all saw the Google the pages. Um, and basically, the circle we're sharing it. So, if you have a South African page, um, please look for Google South African page directory. Uh, send me a message in Google Plus, whatever, and we'll, we'll add you. Awesome. Um, but I know we have my broadband in there. Uh, trying to think, sorry, Tech Central, ZX Show, Let's Talk Network. Um, my gaming well, should have one at some point as well. well if you have a page, just send it out. We'll, we'll yeah. add you in there quickly. It's on the, on the list of things to do. We uh, just recently got the site up and sorted. So cool. we, cool. we're like really happy about that one. Mm-hmm. We great. also have a board at work page. We have a, a handyman in Pretoria page in there as well. Huh. Okay. Um, so it's, just, it's growing out. I think we, we've got about 16 pages so far. So if you want to either find out about more uh, Google South African pages, you can go look there. Or if you have one, send me a link. Rad, rad. Awesome. Um, Think up. <clears throat> Think, Think up, up has gone version 1.0. So um, I don't know if you want anyone who doesn't know what ThinkUp is. Yes. Um, 
Okay. Oh. Right, right. So think up basically lets you liberate your data from Facebook and Twitter. So um, anybody who has tweeted a lot on Twitter, I don't have nearly enough tweets mm. to, to have reached this. Apparently, when you hit 3,200 tweets, you can no longer scroll back in your timeline. So if, in other words, if you have 3,201 tweet, that tweet falls off. You can't well, ever get back to it. one falls off. Yeah, through the, you can't, uh, you know, through the normal web interface. Yeah. I believe it's, and I don't even know if it's still there. So what ThinkUp does is it lets you archive your own data on your own web server. It's not like a quick sign up though. Um, and by the way, this this was made by one of the founders of Lifehacker, I believe. Yes, Gina cool. Chapani is mm. Trippany yeah. is involved. Yeah, and so uh, so you do need a little bit of, of web expertise. Um, it's actually very easy. I've actually installed it. Set it and up. I believe it's that there's an Amazon EC2 store. thingy for it. So you can just make an Amazon EC2 instance for yourself. Or, or, or give us a shout. We have one running. <laughs> um, and we'll send you an invite so you can add. Yeah, add mine is already, my Twitter is already linked in. I didn't <laughs> know I could do Facebook. Um, so, do Facebook. Okay. Um, so I'm going to do Facebook as well. Not that I tweet a lot as well, but if you actually try to roll, scroll down in your timeline... I mean, you get to a point where you, where Chrome starts getting slow because it all loads into <laughs> one page. Mm. Yeah. So people that's actually gone and figured out that you can go only back 3,200, it's probably because they're tweeting to themselves. Uh, it's, something, it's something you'll find happens in Tumblr as well. Uh, it also does the, if you on the Tumblr dashboard, it also does loads everything up in one page. I have tweeted over 3,200 things, but I'm one of the people who won't be signing up for this because I'm quite glad that I can't access my earlier tweets. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so they are is, gone. What, they are over. They're, they're gone. What is quite nice about some, not so much that you can go back in your history. So it does arc of your history and that's a plus, but it will also tell you which of your tweets did well. So it gives you all stats in your tweets of the people you're following. Uh, it tells you what replies you get. So just as analysis of the past week, it's incredibly useful. Well, personally, personally I think that, that if you... T- got over 3,200 tweets. Mm. Um, you obviously then, I wouldn't say the upper tier because you get people who are on like 15, 16,000 tweets and that's just ridiculous mm. as far mm. as I'm concerned. But um, if you're tweeting that much, then you're probably producing enough content per day, per week to not really worry about, oh, which tweet from two weeks ago, three weeks ago I did okay. Well, Maybe from a company profile. Yeah, sorry, this, thing, is, yeah. this is the thing because we put all our... Well, our a lot of yeah. analytics in, in Thinker. Um, yeah. And all our Facebook pages in there. Yeah. Um, so um, I know they're building a Google Plus thing in there as well. And then just analysis of what things did well, what, what were people interested in. Yeah. It's quite useful. So, as you said, if you're doing incredibly yeah. well. Does a retweet count as a tweet? Um, yeah, it, it does. If it, appears, it, it does. appears on and your own. Other people retweet. Oh, that's and quite th- funny, yeah. Huh? Check it. You, you, by the way... <laughs> you, sorry, by the way, Johannes just opened up his Twitter account and he has exactly 1,000 tweets. tweets. It would have been better nice. if it was 11, 11, 11. In, in, uh, Give me a couple of seconds. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, apparently, Johan is listed in my, in my section of people who tweet a little. <laughs> right up there with uh, my broadband founder, Rudolf Miller, who also doesn't tweet a lot. I'm sorry, I'm I've quiet. actually not been tw- tweeting as much recently. I must say Time. thank you to everybody who doesn't tweet a lot because I've got more than enough people in my Twitter stream who do tweet a lot, um, who are in dangerously close to getting the ban hammer yes. or the, the unfollow hammer, I guess, on uh, Twitter. I've, I've got close to 8,000 tweets. Okay. Well <laughs> uh, Here's an example of yeah, a guy who would get the unfollow hammer. But, but, but uh, at the same time, like since I've actually started working and I have a job, uh, you know, the tweeting has become very, very far and few in between. Yeah, that, that's the thing is, is but this year's just got busy and busy and busier. Um, anyway, into something way more exciting, way more key, ray guns. Absolutely. Yeah, so that's what we're talking the about. US Army one day I will build one. Is is apparently going to boost the power of a ray gun on a on a truck that they've got with starlight detwinkling technology. Okay. What kind of ray gun is it? It's <laughs> it's a laser. It's okay. like a yeah. massive laser. Laser. Yeah, massive Can we attach laser it to cannon? sharks' heads? <laughs> <laughs> we call Attack a dolphins. Laser. A laser. <laughs> Attack dolphins from uh, Red Alert Two. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, by the way, Westwood, for ruining. Mixer, Red thank you for bringing up this picture. You can see it's American brown. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. American brown. It's, American it's, army it's brown. Very, it's very American looking. Just yeah. in Since general, our army doesn't have that brown either. No, it has a darker brown. We fight it's in the brown. bush. Not the anyway, desert. Yeah. He, anyway, so you can spot an American vehicle in any photo because of the American brown. <laughs> and They've the got a specific brown they use. Patriotic American flag. And We've got because a military remember, man talking The here. only war they're fighting is in Iraq. 
And that's the color of the sand in Iraq. In any case, keep going on the story. <laughs> <laughs> so the starlight detwinkling technology, as uh, the register calls it very funnily, is uh, actually an adaptive, uh, adaptive optics. It's stuff that they put on telescopes to, well, make stars not twinkle. So, um, so that they can get Aww. a better read. <laughs> stars. That, that, just, that takes the wind out of every twinkle, twinkle little star. Yeah, ever yeah. tell my daughter that, <laughs> I will have your head <laughs> on a platter. <laughs> how's, how's the how, so how are parents, stars don't really twinkle? <laughs> how are parents no, no, going to no, no, sing no. their it's children to sleep stop now? Stop stars twinkling. <laughs> stop stars twinkling. Mm-hmm, 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 little star. <laughs> <laughs> hey, will we get flagged in YouTube? We just have for to that. go for the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we probably will. Oh, uh, Lewis Carroll one, which is twinkle. Like oh, little Hallmark's bat. money now or something. It's old enough to not fall under creative comments, but to fall under... <laughs> Interestingly enough. enough. <laughs> We're not going to spend two minutes on that question. Yeah. Okay, so but, but, but the twinkling is actually a distortion of light, and so by using this technology, they're able to focus the beam. It'll go faster and harder, better, stronger. Harder. <laughs> light. Is this, is this, um, is this a Nissan may, Maybe hotter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Can, can you have a, a ray gun that's harder? Well, it makes a, it makes the ray gun shoot go from stun to kill. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Anyway. Captain Kirk, <laughs> moving swiftly along. <laughs> Amazon Kindle le- Lending Library is con- contract bre- uh, breach. Yes, say so U.S. authors. I think the headline they says it all. Say There's nothing much more to say there until this thing is actually fought out. It's America. Everyone's suing everyone. Well, yes, but what's interesting is that. Um, uh, sorry, US- sorry. Full sentences, please. You just had me worried. I spend money in Kindle store yeah, yeah. for my wife's book. Yeah. It's about ara- around the lending library. Yes, the yes. lending library. Sorry. Yes, you'll guys. Should, we talk, more should we talk slow sentences? And enunciate properly. L- anyway, the Kindle <laughs> lending but this is library. Is there feature? None of us read the articles we're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, well, I've read this one. Um, yeah. there, there's really nothing much to report without delving into like massive specifics, which I don't think is really necessary at this point. The link will be there. It'll be in the show notes. I'll dump it in RSC if you guys want it. Um, but basically, what to me, the most interesting thing is that US authors are unhappy with their books being lent out. So... There are a lot of authors I follow on on places like Twitter and Facebook, uh, Twitter and YouTube, that are quite happy with their books being lent out because they're just happy to have them being read. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I know that probably guys who um, who see a, a lot fewer sales might be you know might be less happy about well, the thing. But well, generally, though, there was one author said, in actual fact, part of your, a lot of your problem with being an author is if you're big enough, the people laying your book out, people are going to buy your book. The people who actually need to worry are the people who are not having their books lent out. Maybe and those are the ones complaining talking about it. But but these are these are some no, pretty big publishing houses. It's I think the publishing houses, Harper Collins and stuff, yeah. were one of the names that I read. Um, so yeah, it's it's actually it's actually unfortunate. Um, I mean, why don't they shut down libraries? Well, that was my first when they started this book lending thing. I was like. There a goes di- the libraries. A digital library. Yeah. There actually goes the libraries, and that was my concern about. At the end of the day, we, our libraries are dying, and I'm ashamed haven't been in a library for a while since Varsity. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm one of the people <laughs> killing them by not going. But, yeah. But, I mean, at the end of the day, with them lending out books, now, I actually disagree. I agree. No, it's not I, the right I, thing to do. I'm you, pro you, them lending out books because if I buy a book, I lend it to friends, and yes. I, I lend all my books out quite. Now I'm buying a book on my Kindle. I'm not paying that much less. Okay, so why now don't you I lend your Kindle? That will give you the same idea. So... No, because no. Um, it's the yes. hardware. It's not the same. Yeah. Uh, I would not give my Kindle to somebody else to use, mainly because, well, I know my friends. Well, because then I'm like, <laughs> no. But no, then you won't lend out no, your no. book, right? No, no I know I if I lend out a book, they won't read it because I don't think my friends can read. Okay, I'll buy my second book. <laughs> what am I going to read it on? Okay, so uh, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. I, I, I agree. Difficult this, advice. This I'm not really a reader, so I should actually yeah, keep well, The thing is, I'm, I'm all for actually having, being able to lend out all your licenses. So yeah. whether that's licenses to music, to games, while, to while, books. While we're on reading, if I can throw something in on the side there. Mm-hmm. Um, you all know I'm a big Audible fan. Their new client gives you um, high-speed reading. So you can now, instead of reading the book. Oh, very cool. You can have the chipmunks reading your book. Yeah, I was about to no, say. No, but that's the thing. No. They only released <laughs> it now because they change... The, the pitch of the voice. Let's so see. They do frequency scaling, so it actually maintains the right pitch. Okay. And it works. So awesome. it's like how auto tune works. Now I thought the first time around, I was so like, okay, but who the hell? Why would you want to listen to a book quicker than what it really is? I'm listening to two books I've listened to before now as a recap before I listen to the next in the series, mm. and then you actually realise at one and a half speed, it actually works. It's like it irritates you like for a minute or two where you're going. 
This guy's talking a lot quicker than normal. Just do you, do you want to do something really irritating? Turn it off now. Oh, yes. <laughs> I get, I get, like, get to the good part. Why? Get to no, the good no, part. No. Why are they talking? It suddenly sounds like, you know, in they movies explain. where they're like, people go into <laughs> slow mode. So why? At no, normal speak. speed sounds like that. So if you haven't tried Audible yet, go and subscribe. It's a very good service. I enjoy it. It means um, and moving if, along. For a lot of the podcast things in Android, there's a Presto uh, app you can install as well that mm. gives them high speed. So all my podcasts I listen to, I listen at one and a half times. Well, good luck listening to this one. Double the We're already speaking so fast. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, <laughs> and apparently it's native in Apple. So all Apple. Who cares? <laughs> And iTunes, and, and you and there you, you've no, completely no. lost your hand again. It's like Apple. It's like, what? <laughs> <sighs> if it's not an Android, it doesn't exist. You know, and Chuck Norris took the bite of the Apple. I kind of agree with that sentiment. We broke though. 50%. We, Apple. <laughs> I've Android broke 50% of market share. Market share. Yeah. Well done. Moving along. <laughs> I want to get to skirmish. What is this thing? <clears throat> Skyrim. Skyrim. Maybe we should skip the rest of the stuff because okay, right, and talk, talk about games. All right. Why Quentin's here? <laughs> to speak. Well, I, I don't know why I'm here. Um, <laughs> Who do you represent? You foolishly said yes. Because I foolishly said what yes. What is your day? Because Young coaxed me in and he said there was going to be food. There's nothing. <laughs> There's food. So, Where's the food? <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? He's food. lying about me lying. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm lying about him lying. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I'm from my gaming, which is all, all well and good. <laughs> what do you do at my gaming? Uh, I, I'm the, now the resident zombie that's there. I, I work until... My bones bleed. One of the writers. Your bones bleed. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That, He's that's a staff writer at my gaming. Yeah, I'm a staff writer. Oh, staff writer at my gaming. Uh, okay. Apparently, more specifically, you handle a lot more of the consoles. Yeah, um, well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't uh, put the stuff on record. Yeah, but, uh, probably not on, on the record. But yeah, I, I'm more the more on the console side of things because everyone else who basically does the writing there, uh, specifically James and Derek, they very, very much PC gamer. So, yeah, as soon as anything PC gaming comes into there, then the arguments start. But it's, it's all good. Yeah, so which basically... Which console? I've actually got all. I've okay, got so all. which one's your favourite? the Wii, because... Uh, I, it's one of those difficult questions, like, when people which say Xbox Which game is your favourite? Even worse. It's, at the moment, worse. at the moment, at the moment. At the moment, Skyrim is just completely blowing my mind. Um, I got it last week, Friday. I had it on pre-order. And now I played it all weekend, and it's what just... What platform did you play it on? PlayStation 3. Okay, cool. So one with proper graphics? Well, yes. well, that's debatable. There's, there's, actually, there's actually been um, a lot of talk online about the PlayStation's anti-aliasing and how it just makes everything look very fuzzy and blurry compared okay. to Xbox 360, who j- it just looks a little bit Crystal. sharper. Yeah. Okay. Versus um, PC. No, versus PS3. We are, we're, not, we're, not, we're not really bringing the PC into here because everyone the PC knows that the PC... Oh, s- blows everyone <laughs> I was only there kidding. We go. There we go. There we go. Feel <laughs> all guilty you. now. Yeah, now I do feel guilty. Yeah, we we, we tend not to bring um, like for for your mass releases like uh, Assassin's Creed or Batman or Skyrim. We don't we don't really bring the PC comparison into it mainly because the PC will always look better. Yes. Okay. Always. Like uh, I can't even argue with the fact, and I love. Consoles. In the old days, it wasn't always the case. It's um, always been the case. No, it's always, it's it's always, it's always been. been the case. Um, PC, PC has always <laughs> been pushing the boundaries. The only problem is where the biggest argument comes in for console gaming is the cost involved. Um, PCs, to get a high-end PC to run the graphics at full capacity, you're going to be paying through your yeah, But if so. you s- look at the money you'll save on the games. Yes. So I think it all evens mm, out it, in the it end. It might even so, out and in it's the about end. technical. it's about technical, um, or the amount of technical time you're willing to put in as yeah. well, I think. Yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. I mean, you've got a choice. You can buy a pre-built PC, which is going to, which, I mean, as a, as a PC gamer, obviously that's not what I do, but I think in South Africa, no, you we're, can't. we're actually fairly <laughs> unique in South can't Africa. Do that. There's a lot of folks overseas who just buy pre-built gaming rigs. Um, we can we spoke to those guys at Eve Tech. Alienware, Dell, Eve yes, Tech. Yes, I know, like Eve Tech and do here. But yeah, like, yeah. just the, the techie inside of me. I, I, oh, I just, uh, okay, the techie, okay. Like, down inside okay. I'm, not, no. I'm, not, I'm not the biggest tech head in the world. Uh, I mean, like, I don't start salivating when new tech comes in and like, ooh, gotta got to get my hands all over it. But I would never buy a pre- pre-built gaming PC, ever. Yep. It, it just it doesn't make any sense. And because you've wrong. got specific needs. <laughs> You've got specific needs for what you want in, in, when it comes to gaming. So why would you then well, leave I'm, it to somebody else to do? I'm, I must say, coming back into why, why consoles. I, said, I, I personally don't have a consoles, but I work very much in the PC world of things. Yeah. 
Um, so I've got to spend all the money anyway for the PC <laughs> for uh, for like editing and all the rest of it. So I have yeah. this fairly high end PC to use. For and while you've got it there, you might as well yeah. use it. Yeah, definitely. But one of the big complaints I have is like <laughs> st- st- uh, st- Soul- yeah, Soulcraft is the worst one with this. Every time I come, cool. You know, I've got a, I've got half an hour quick updates. One quick game, <sighs> click. Okay, updating for two that. hours. Yeah, but see that, that's also, for then. That's what that's even worse. <laughs> But that's also something now that, that's becoming uh, almost a redundant argument because mm. one of my biggest gripes with PlayStation especially, I mean, I've got Xbox and I've got PlayStation. Now, Xbox will release an update to Xbox Live mm. or, you know, the dashboard. I think they do it once a year with minor updates along the year. Um, PlayStation, uh, Sony at one stage, they're releasing a new, a new firmware update. No, like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. No, 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 no. Sony, Sony was trying to fix security issues. No, but there's, see, this is where my gripe comes in. When Xbox wants to update something specific, they release maybe a 12, a 12 to 15 megabyte update. PlayStation 3 consistently releases a 150 plus megabyte uh, update. Okay. Every single time. I mean, if they're just taking something out or putting a small little thing in, why do you have to release a whole entire massive update? And I think it's purely based on the way, the architecture of the machine. Yeah, but you find most we also with a lot of these things, they sign it. So you can't do patches. Yeah. As soon as you do patches, you, you then need to have something where you can alter the software and stuff like that. So you find maybe they push a full image into the, into the console that's signed and, and yeah. wrapped up and everything. Which, which also makes sense. But then, uh, I don't know, uh, for me it's, it's, it's frustrating and it boils down to what your arguments for PC why, what irritates you about PC? It's becoming more prevalent in consoles as well. Uh, day the, one patches okay. is another thing. With consoles, though, yes, okay, I'll pick that up with uh, Batman Arkham Asylum. It's like, Batman cool, had came it. in, and stupidly I decided let's connect to the network just in case. Battlefield had it, Modern Warfare had it. Day zero patches. Pretty much. Admittedly, though, it was done within 20 minutes. True, but it shouldn't, yeah, but it shouldn't have to be line. done post purchase, is, is my, my whole ten, thing. I have a 10 meg line with a Four mega. Four mega okay, you've got a four meg line. Not everybody's got access to that. Yes. John, 384. Okay. Yeah. Good luck. Uh, if I don't plug it into the network, we can still play the game. Yeah. Well, Which is more than PC can say. But no, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Not, not owning one of those consoles, but the Wii. Um, <laughs> you've, you've got a limited hard drive inside of it. So what? Are you going to end up that all these patches are just going to shoot up well, current, shoot up all that drive? Currently, I don't think the Wii, the Wii's... Uh, I don't know. I'm Sorry, not, I'm talking about the PS3 updates. Oh, the PS3. Well, the PS3 doesn't have a limited hard drive. I think the, the, the smallest, smallest hard drive it comes with is 120 gigs at the moment. Yeah. And, um, okay. Microsoft has had a lot of problems with the, the Xbox. Because they released an Xbox without a hard drive. That's well, it's, it's got a four gigabyte memory but before that they were, oh, oh the, yeah, no, the, they, they Xbox don't, yeah, what they, they call it the arcade the, yeah the Xbox the new Xbox S uh, arcade the Xbox 360 S sorry and um, yeah they come with 4 gigs of memory but now the problem is is I think it was Battlefield 3 came with a separate texture pack mm-hmm. you have to install that to get the highest textures in Battlefield 3 Hello, you don't. You've you've got limited space as it is. Yeah, You're gonna, that's what I'm asking I the question. Think, I don't even think it fits into four gigabytes. No, I mean, on, uh, was the PC install was what twelve gigs, yeah. if not more than that. So basically, what happened was, if you've got an Xbox 360 arcade with four gigabytes of hard drive space, mm. which is one of the best selling consoles in South Africa because it's it's the more more affordable one, um, you can't play Battlefield 3 with high res textures. You have to play it with uh, what um, reports were calling last generation graphics. So you, you're basically playing a current-gen game with last-gen graphics. Uh, I'd now, be uh, is that just I'd because be it, well. the disc was shipped incorrectly? No, no, no. Because they could have fitted all of that it's on the disc. It's this whole concept nowadays. Well, because we can update it over the internet. Let's just ship it not fully finalized. And while, while it's been shipped, we'll quickly update so it. So games are going to get like to, win, to PC software <clears> where <throat> rather wait for the second release. <laughs> In this case, in this it's case, it would it boil down to capacity issue because Xbox is still running off of DVDs. Um, oh. So the game's big. It's a huge game. It's got ex- like very, very impressive graphics across yeah. the platform, but obviously better on PC. Um, but the, the, yeah, it boiled down to capacity. Basically, you needed an entire DVD separate to contain the graphics, the texture packs that they needed, whereas PlayStation didn't have that issue because they used Blu-rays, which has... Massive capacity. Okay. And when you asked me earlier what my favorite console is, there, there are so many arguments for and against either one. I'm, I'm privileged favorite enough console is to console. have Pretty much. I'm privileged enough to have both. Um, Xbox, I feel, is running into issues with uh, disk space because Mass Effect 2, on, which is an Xbox game, it started off on the Xbox and was supposed to be Xbox exclusive. 
um, shipped on two two discs, and it's just such a such a pain to have to change discs halfway through a game. Uh, whereas the PlayStation Three version didn't, you know, it's on one thing. So yeah, that that's going to be something we'll see. We'll we'll be changing, uh, especially I think coming into next year when the next gen starts. Are murmuring. they coming? You sort of hear rumors that both they are and aren't coming next. Well, year. we actually, well, I actually wrote a, an article about rumors that were circulating around about the, specifically about Xbox Seven Twenty as it's being called, or um, the PlayStation Four. Because I mean, a lot of analysts are saying PlayStation is going to get the jump on Xbox because they missed out this generation because they released a year later, mm-hmm. and so they missed huge market on that. Um, I, I debunked most of the the rumors from my own. Uh, capacity from there, why I don't think we'll be hearing or seeing uh, the consoles until at least 2014. I, I'm also wondering with, with the, the uh, like the Tegra 3 that's coming out, and so like the modern tablets are becoming Thank incredibly you. powerful. Yeah, 2014 for consoles is too late. It's dead. No, no, we'll, we'll start. We'll definitely start be hearing uh, hearing about the tech that's going to be in there. But you no, 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 you don't understand what yeah, you're saying. What I want to say is 2014 is too late to like, like the uh, consoles might mo- be dead by then. We'll have the, no, that Motorola so. Atrix. We'll have the you? Logan. We'll have the Logan yeah. Nvidia chip by then. By, yeah. yeah. So if anybody hasn't uh, followed, Nvidia is calling their chips by all superhero names, and Logan's <laughs> one of the lower ones down, named after Wolverine. Cool. Brand loyalty is a very scary thing. Yeah, I don't. Right. I don't think that consoles will will be down and out. But if you look at already at PlayStation, they already brought out an Android phone that you can play games on. Yeah, the Xperia. So now, what I still think is going to happen in two, three years' time, you're not going to get a PlayStation. You're going to get a phone, PlayStation tablet, or, or, or something with a high end that you'll play off this this phone device. I can tell you, slot in, and then you can walk away, and that might also be your controller yeah. and some other things with that. Yeah, I see that, that. That's that to me is the biggest the biggest flaw in in that is that we like controllers. Gamers like controllers. Okay. Um, tablets. I, I, I've got my iPad too. I play a lot of iPad games. I mean, I what interface played. is your th- uh, PS3 uh, um, controller on? What do you mean? Wi-Fi. Wireless. Oh uh, yeah, it is. It is wireless. So you can talk no, to no, any yeah, tablet. Granted, but but that until we start seeing that integration, and we are. I mean, I think. But um, uh, I can still see a point where you'll come in. You'll bring your phone, and your friend will bring his PlayStation phone, and it will actually run and talk to each other. Well, in and then you'll be able to use your. I, I, I think it's interesting. I want the biggest screen. I want a proper control yeah. system. Touch screens. Suck. No. Okay, now for game control. exactly what I saw in Cape Town um, last week with the Africom, Hawaii had a full stand, and they were showing the latest. The S7 Slim is a total failure, but they next to the release of tablet, which is a um, honeycomb mm-hmm. tablet with a HDMI output, full all the sensors and everything, and the guys were playing Need for Speed, connected to a 42 inch. Okay, well, well, what I like about the gaming mm-hmm. gaming industry is that it's got such a diverse. In a ver- market mm. when consoles started coming up everyone was like oh it's the end of pc gaming you know and then the pc gamers were like what playing games without a keyboard what and mouse what's wrong with you people how could this ever work but there are still those two core markets and it's the same thing we'll see with the mobile guys and the, the pc games have got a far less love but and the games it's interesting enough we we i think we're seeing a, a, a nice new revelation revolution yeah. of well, as PC the PC gaming. is getting too old and basically yeah i think i think people are realizing that their consoles are getting a little bit on in age and the pc is still one of those platforms that are just always out there in advanced but yeah again i think going portable onto tablets and smartphones and all those things i think yes it's going to be it's going to blow up our comment was just our comment is the fact that <laughs> by 2014, the future of the console as we know it actually might be... And I can actually agree with you there because um, Nintendo, you know, the leaders of innovation, when they released the, the Nintendo Wii, everyone was like, this is going to bomb so yes. hard. I mean, I, I respect respected games journalist that I, I knew. As soon as they announced it, he said that this is the end of Nintendo. And a year later, he was eating his words, and, and he admitted that he was eating his words. The worst display card ever. Yeah. The worst, no hard drive. But it outsold card. everything. And I've got one. Yeah. So it made it's life easy. And that's why I saw that we, my argument from the phone comes in. It will be easy. Yeah. So I still think you're, you're plugging into the HDMI port. So yes, yeah. I don't think you're oh, playing absolutely. with your you friend yeah. on, on that device. But now they... But that will have all your games in it. So yeah. when you go to your friend's house, you've got all your games with you. You'll be able to transfer it. And it may not be the best, but it will be convenient. Yeah, no, no, definitely. And uh, at E3 this year, Nintendo unveiled the Wii U. 
which again, everyone's are saying, what were they thinking? This isn't, this is stupid. This is not mm. going to work. But, and I think, okay, I'm, I'm skeptical myself, but it, it works in line with what you guys are saying because of the, the LCD controller where you can basically, oh, I'm playing on the TV with my controller, da, da, da. Oh, someone comes to the room, they want to use the TV, so I just move out the room and the image moves from the TV onto my controller and I move off. And, and that's pretty much exactly the, what you guys are talking about. It's, it's that convenience and that portable gaming of moving around. Um, I think with the PlayStation Vita, I think Sony are also implementing a, a, yeah, but a similar I've kind heard of thing. That's bombing horribly, horribly. It's too, that form factor. Yeah, is your phone now. Yeah, it, it, it's it's like I don't understand why Sony are are releasing another portable gaming device like that. I mean, the PSP did well enough. The PSP Go was a dismal failure, mm. especially here in South Africa, because everything we, we don't do digital distribution very well. Uh, but to me, it just doesn't make sense, and it's also another reason why I don't think they'll be announcing PlayStation Four uh, for any release anytime soon, because the h- hardware is tough to make; it costs a lot of money. Yeah. Anyway, I'm serving with yeah. Skyrim. Uh, <laughs> you, uh, you wanted to get to Spark- Skyrim, sorry. Just no, no, just huge, I'm seeing the time. We, 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 huge <laughs> tangent over there. Um, well, what, what what can I say about Skyrim? It is an awesome game. If you w- played what Oblivion, is it? okay, it's it's basically an RPG. Mm-hmm. It's it's massive. It's as massive world that you get to explore. You develop your characters. Uh, I wouldn't say you you choose the story. It, it's not one of those branching kind of RPGs. Mm-hmm. You can play however you want and and sort of do whatever you mm-hmm. want. But um, it, it follows a starting point, end point kind of thing. Um, what, what's so great about uh, the Elder Scrolls series, because it's the Elder Scrolls V, is that it just creates this massive world. Now, what they tried to do with Oblivion last time around was they tried to keep, create a living world where like, there were NPCs and stuff like that. You could interact with them, but they had their own thing to do. Mm-hmm. In the Never end, quite yeah, in the end, it came off a bit cheesy because you, you start realizing that these guys aren't really living in the world. They're just sort of following a strict routine, mm-hmm. and they're sticking to that. Um, and most most games are actually still there. If you look yeah. at sort of RPGs, even The Witcher games like that, that the, and even The Witcher Two, which was supposed to have a more fluid mechanic yeah. uh, and and more fluid interactions with with the NPCs, it's still you know they, they have set paths. They might choose different ones, and you might not find the NPC like you know there are scouts that scout the forest. Yeah, you might not find <laughs> them at the exact same spot as you left them last time. But they're still in if the you wait there long enough, they will arrive. But that's always been an, an, an RPG trope, almost. Mm. Uh, like, if you look at any of the Final Fantasy series and stuff, okay, you walk into this bustling city, and everyone's standing in the same place. And you can go off, do whatever you need to do, and you come back. The guy will be standing in the exact same place. And he'll be so... So it's not... But having said that, you want that. Well, yeah. Now, now you need to speak to person X. Now you've got to run around, find them. Or you have a map that shows you exactly where they are. I mean, that's but still not the realistic, realistic still, but uh, mechanic-wise, it works still. Yeah. Like, yeah. look, it, perhaps perhaps from a, a, that, that perspective, it's, it's a bit of a pain. But it, what it does succeed in is, is it creates this living world that, you, that you're interacting mm. with. Now, I'm hesitant to say it's like, oh, so, so super realistic. Everyone reacts so realistically to people. In the end, it's a game, and it is still limited. Like, there's this uh, glitch. Uh, you can check a YouTube video of it where you can essentially put a bucket on an NPC's head and steal things because that's how they detect if you're stealing is if they see you. So if you put a bucket over your head, they can't see you, so you can steal the stuff. Your head or their head? Their head, sorry. Did I say that's your actually head? pretty clever. Yeah. <laughs> Except that if I put a bucket over your head, you're just going to chill there. Yeah. That, that, see, that's <laughs> yeah, but it, it's sort of the fact that the AI has gotten clever enough to know that a bucket over the head <laughs> obstructs vision. The person const- Have you got a bucket? <laughs> how, how about, how about <laughs> test this out? How about AI that, that knows that I you can so. lift now the, the bucket off notice. your head? Now the mixer's going to notice. Yeah. No, like, the mixer might not. We know, we know they're slightly AI yeah. orientated. So, so yeah. <laughs> but, but the game is, game is huge. It's developed so much from, from Oblivion, not in, just in terms of looks, but in terms of the gameplay uh, mechanics. Uh, whereas in Oblivion, you could have your one weapon and shield and all those things. Now you've got the dual wielding system. You can have two swords. You can have magic or a sword or your two-handed weapon. And it's just, it's just so, so much better. They've incorporated it. It's got a very Fallout feel to it. Now, Fallout's also made by Bethesda. Mm-hmm. And um, it's... it's that was based on the same engine that they used before. Yeah, okay. And, uh, yeah, it had the, 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 the VAT system which let you shoot and then it did this whole matrixy slow motion 3D cutscene thing after you killed someone. Now, they've sort of incorporated that into 
into uh, Skyrim. So you've, you've got this, just this polished feel. It just feels so much more polished than Oblivion ever felt. Uh, like I played Oblivion just as retrospective the other day and it just it was just too cheesy. It's like a game that tries to take itself seriously but you can't because everything's so hollow almost. Um, so yes, it's, it's a brilliant game. I'm going to waste so many hours playing it. I uh, spent all weekend playing it and my horse committed suicide. Well, <laughs> it, it, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> your, your horse in the game. I'm yeah, my assuming. horse. My horse in the game. Hope, hope basically, in the game. basically, what you started that sentence with. <laughs> you spent so many hours, and you ended with my horse committed suicide. <laughs> because so we all assume like you got this horse yeah. somewhere in Kalami that is like now just given up with you and decided to give. So finish your sentence. If I had a horse, it would commit suicide <laughs> because I play the game so much. But yeah, I know. Basically, what what the next question? Because you ride the horse. <laughs> <laughs> because because the world's so big and it's got all these mountains and stuff. It's one of those funny gameplay mechanics so where you, you can climb the mountains. Literally, you can literally run up side. mountains. Um, it's not very realistic, and obviously the game developers don't expect you to do it. Maybe they do, but it's very easy to run up mountains and go up if you've yeah. got you know cool. the endurance to do it. Um, unfortunately, while the character can also run down mountains if you're careful enough, the horse can't, and he and he fell and he died. And I spent a thousand gold on him, and I was very sad, very okay. disappointed. <laughs> yeah, that, that's how. Just you know, it's how so it you goes. just have to get a better horse next time. Yeah, but I mean, that's what's so cool about the game is that it's got all these little things. Everybody who goes and plays it will have a completely cool. different experience. What other cool games are going, coming out at the moment? Um, Assassin's Creed Revelations landed in the office yesterday. I'm, I'm busy reviewing it at the moment. Cool. Um, it's pretty much. <laughs> I can see Johan shaking his head. No, I'm looking at the list here in the my, show my, notes, my, okay. and the most important one is not yet. Oh, wh- yeah, what's we, we'll the, talk about oh, we'll that. Get there, get there. Wait, 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 I just want to ask a question about this. My p- problem with the previous one is one of these ones, open worlds, and you're flipping spend so much time going from point A to point B. Have they gotten rid of that? Because I must say, Batman sort of got rid of it. I don't know the problem. Did this fast, one get rid of it? Fast traveling in the Assassin's Creed world, unfortunately, no. I'm not, not that I've experienced it so far. I'm still very early in the games, but I it, it wasn't. It wasn't the previous game. It's odd that it won't be in this one. Well, no. There, there was the, like difference, the difference between that was... Sewer system. The, the, oh, yes, no, you're right. That, that does exist. And it will uh, occur, probably open up later on in the game. Um, right at the moment, I'm still in a very small area of the city. So I like, have a very small area to explore. But uh, yeah, yeah, Jan's right. Um, in the last game, you could basically switch between different points of the city by going through the sewer system. Okay, right. And there was other well, ways well, as well. You could mm-hmm. actually go to your like, assassin bro points. Um, I don't uh, remember. Looked, ex- I remember maybe playing it was in the sewer system. One. And it was like, okay, cool. In the city, not a problem. Then it was like, okay, now you got to travel to the next city. Yeah. And then you ride a horse to the next city. And a lot it's of people, not like, why? Why am I doing this? It's something we saw we saw on the forums a lot, is that um, when we, in, whenever we speak about Assassin's Creed, they're like, oh, I played Assassin's Creed 1, it was repetitive, it was boring, and I gave up on the series. Let me say this now, I hated Assassin's Creed 1. It was repetitive, and it was boring. Okay. Um, I never finished it, so like when Assassin's Creed 2 came out, I read the reviews, I decided to give it another try, and I loved it. It was okay. awesome, it was right. refined and perfected in every way. So it, it's like Assassin's Creed and more. Um, to catch up with the story, I went onto Wikipedia and read up on the story, because I, I kind of yeah. like the story. You're not allowed to say anything, not about the start of the game, not the middle of the game, not the end of the game, because they leave you on a cliffhanger yes. <laughs> at the end of the last game. In, yeah. in You're not allowed to say a thing. By any chance, are you a fan of Assassin's Creed? <laughs> well, the, I, I didn't actually play the first two okay. games. I actually only played the Brotherhood one. Right. So I actually missed Assassin's Creed 1, 2, the first... You better get onto Wikipedia and find out what happened, because it's all very important. Uh, from Assassin's Creed 2... Uh, through to Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and now to Revelations, it all follows one one wave. Well, I kind of got caught up on Brotherhood, sort of. Uh, it, it's kind of difficult to. Uh, I suppose I, like I miss, each each game is self contained, so you can you can play. Each I game missed Altair's story, and it looks like the, the, this Revelations is going to be about Altair and Ezio, and I've missed Altair's yeah. story completely. Revelations, Revelations, basically, um, the first game was about Altair, the second and well Brotherhood were were Ezio and his story. Now the third one is specifically combining all three of the characters Desmond uh, who's the main guy Altair and Ezio into one and they're wrapping up that that segment and uh, Ubisoft have said that this is the end of Ezio and Altair and they've announced that next year there's going to be a new Assassin's Creed game uh, that's going to wrap up pretty much like because the whole game revolves around this big event that's going to happen in 2012 so Ubisoft has said well it's stupid if we bring out a game in 2013 about 2012 
Because mm. it's, you know, we in a semi reality here. Well, you have to ride the hype wave now. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. We, we so, can sell more games, though. Uh, sorry, uh, but yeah. <laughs> so at the risk of becoming another Activision that releases the same game every year, um, they, they are going to be releasing a, a new Assassin's Creed next year. I don't know if it's going to be a subtitled game or if it's going to be a full, fully fledged Assassin's Creed 3. But um, we're definitely going to be seeing something new, right. though, which is great. I, I cool. can't wait to actually finish Revelation so I can. You know, yeah. see what to expect. Sorry, I just, I'm just watching the time. We we need to just move on. Yep, cool. yep. But apparently, uh, your your brother from RC says luckily it's not D3 because you spent an entire week where you ignored everybody playing. D3. I was in high school. Uh, in 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 my defence, in high school you can you know you could just shut your door. You can sort of like shower occasionally, get some chow, and just keep going. Nowadays you have to go to work and stuff. What's up with that? I yeah. Know. What's the best game coming out? No, there's some updates, but the one out of the out of all the MOUs that's not on the list that you guys put you, you've got FF14, Final, Final Fantasy. Fantasy. Uh, we were gonna, yeah, we're going to talk about uh, MMOs. Just briefly, a bit. But I think we've run World out of time. Yeah. The next uh, patch. Yeah, yeah. GW2. Guild, Guild Wars 2. Uh, Eve. Eve Online, yeah. He was going to Star was gonna Wars. That. Old Republic. <laughs> Star Wars, Old Republic. Ah. Thank you. Are you a fan? Yeah. And, and with How can you not be a fan? you got to try it. <laughs> <laughs> we really are out of time, so we're going to go into the kicker. And <laughs> thank you for adding that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Really this so will everybody be the play first Star Wars Old Republic or you one will come and No man, this, just give it a bash because it's going to be an MOU of a universe. MMO. 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 MMO of a universe. Yes, yes. They're all a universe. If you played, if you played the standalone games, LucasArts, they are amazing with when it comes to... This comes thing has been in beta for more than a year. Yeah, so... <laughs> The first beta. To, uh, <laughs> okay, go. Yeah. Sorry, uh, to the kick, uh, it, uh, kick it, kick it, we, kick we it, kick it. We have one minute. Um, kick it time. Time. Okay. As promised, I don't, I don't know if we have time to watch it, so um, we're just going to talk about it quickly. Yes. Um, NASA has a time lapse. This is our kicker. Um, go watch it. We will have the, the, the video in the show notes. Yes. Please, please go watch it. Pretty um, auroras. Yes. Of, from the International say, Space pretty, Station. Pretty, please. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, pretty Aurora's shot from the International Space Station. Very, very cool. Cool. All right. And so with, pretty. With mm. that, we, we're going to say goodbye. Uh, thank you, Quentin, so much for joining us. Where thank can you people for find me. you? Twitter. People can find me on, well, at mygaming.co.za. Yeah. Or if you want to follow me on Twitter, which I don't recommend, uh, it's a corner. Especially with three, yeah. uh, over three, what? 8,000. Over 9,000! I actually want to get over 9,000 <laughs> so I can say that. That'll be my tweet. Over 9,000! But so it's corner. Should, should one tweet one, two, <laughs> three, four, sorry. It's Q O R N E A. I don't really say anything interesting there because I've got work now. <laughs> cool. Uh, Jan from Milan, you can find him at my broadband, the yep. staff writer. Yes, I'm still the staff writer at my broadband. Yeah, I've been fired yet. Yep. Not that I say much of anything in, of interest on Twitter anyway, but I think that's why I have. I ha that's why I have so many followers. Because uh, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> well, Jan's very interesting character. He doesn't say much. Yeah, we I, like him. I don't. I don't make people angry enough to want to leave. <laughs> and Johan else? Not on Twitter. Find me on Google plus Johan. Oh. We have a Google fanboy here, and I remember, I remember what a struggle it was to get this man onto Android. I do as well. I remember having this <laughs> argument with him about many times. I have this Android phone, and he and has the same. Nokia. And he was going, "Yeah, no, but I can do with it. So look, my Aston, we got this lightsaber out. Ah, this is a lightsaber. No, no, no. And he, he, like, he searched found the lightsaber. So hard to find it. And Everyone one, has the one day he, he, he got his upgrade phone. He's like, oh, well, let me try this Android thing. And he came back to me the next day. He's like, hooked. His life has changed. <laughs> Look, it's not that you can't do any of that stuff on a Nokia. And I'm sure the same will probably happen with somebody one day gives me an iPad. But until that day, we're going to say good night. Yes. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Cheers. <laughs>